Today we're going to be discussing the division rule of counting. This is group B8 with Nick H, Jacob H, Jacob T, and Kevin Yang. If you want to check out some more discrete math videos, go to kanoatom.com. That's K N O A T O M. Dot com. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be going over today is the division rule with sets. Today we'll be discussing the division rule of counting. The division rule states that there are n divided by d ways to do a task if it can be done using a procedure that can be carried out in n ways. And for every way w, exactly d of the end ways correspond to way w. Now this might be a bit of a mouthful, and it might not be apparent what this rule is saying, so we'll explain it in depth. One way to explain the division rule is to use sets and functions. So we're going to apply the division rule with sets. So we're going to take the set A and the set B. So let's say that A is the set with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 8. And let F be the function that maps onto B and it adds 1 to the value of A if it is odd and it does nothing otherwise. So the value for 1 would map to the value of 2 with B and 2 would also map to 2. So then for 3 this value would map, we add 1 to 4 4 would also map to 4. For the value 5, this would map to 6, which would also map to 6, and then so on. By the division rule, we then know that because there are 8 elements in A, then there are 8 divided by 2, or 4 elements in B. And you can see that this holds true with the sets because for all of these eight elements, there's four elements corresponding to it within B. So now we're going to look at another example of the division rule. And let's say we have 24 objects that we want to put in different bins and we wish to put exactly three of these objects into each bin. So if we were to break it up, the first three would go into one bin, the next three would go into another bin, the next three would go into another bin, and this would carry on until we reached all of the bins, placing three in each bin. So then from this, by working it out at hand, we can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bins that we placed objects into. And the division rule, if we used it, it would be 24 divided by the number of objects in each bin, which is three. And this also gives you eight bins that we need to place these objects into. So we can see that the division rule also can apply, be applied with this. Finally, we will show a more complex application of the division rule. Suppose we wish to see, suppose we have a seating arrangement as so, and we wish to see n people around a circular table. So how many different ways would we be able to do this? In this case, let two, let two arrangements that can be obtained from each other by rotation be equivalent. First, let us count how many total ways there are to seat n people, beginning with an arbitrary seat 1, 
and then we can go to 2 and then this will continue so on until we reach n minus 1 and then finally we would be at n. Thus when we multiply all of these together we get a factorial seed of arrangements. We know that for each seed and arrangement counted this way there are n identical seed and arrangements as if we lifted, listed them out linearly. So let's look at the the ways that we could seat people within an arrangement as if we, uh, type, I'm going to type them out for you. So we could have one and then we could have two and this could carry on. This is the example that we showed in the picture to n minus one and then n. So this is one way that you could see. And then the next one we're going to have is n to 1 to 2 all the way to n minus 1. And the last way we're going to represent this is going to be from n minus 1 to n one, two, and then n minus three. So as you can see, since we're working in a circular table, it doesn't matter where you start as long as that you, you reach each element within the set. So if you start at n minus one, then first we're gonna go to n, one, two, whatever number you pick, you can still make your way around the table with all of the elements. So, we know that for each seed and arrangement, all of these choices together, we get n factorial seed and arrangements. This is because if you look at this and you were to simplify it, the one would cancel, these, these elements would cancel within and it would reduce to n factorial. And then because each of these has exactly n duplicates, we may eliminate the duplicates by using the division rule. So we have n factorial arrangements divided by n duplicates, which gives us n factorial divided by n seed and arrangements, all of which are unique. Or this can be reduced to n minus 1 factorial. So in all the division rule is useful for eliminating redundant permutations when there is an n to one relation between useful and redundant permutations. As a more general statement the division rule is used for counting when there are n to one relations such as the n to one function used in our example earlier. Thank you, and also don't forget to check out the website for more discrete math videos at kanoatom.com.